We take mechanization and robotics. Okay, so here I have given couple of examples. Again, you go to the to web and you look at uh, what is construction robotics today. You'll find a lot of companies are working on this. Okay, because construction used to be unstructured. It used to be a tough environment to bring robots into. But today the technology is advancing so rapidly, and the requirements of construction are also advancing rapidly that robotics in construction is becoming. Are economically feasible globally. Okay, so here this is a bit of a difference from all the IT aspects we looked. One is definitely reduction of physical effort. Okay, we have superhuman capabilities which can then you know things which are per, uh, manually you just could not do, and this can improve your productivity. It can improve uh, you know your safety performance, occupational health. You know, workers not having to lift, all of this gets improved significantly. Okay, yeah, all of these other aspects of which we are interested in lean get have a positive impact. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let us discuss variability. What is variability with respect to mechanization or robotics? To reduce the variability. Yeah. It will reduce the variability. It will reduce because my processing time is based on the automated uh, process and not on a manual process. Plus, it is more of a standardization. So more standardized, exactly. Okay, so all of these come into to basically enable more lean processes through the you know in 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 the uh, in construction. So here is an example of a couple of uh, of automated uh, piece of equipment which we have we are aware of one is a masonry robot you can see what this robot does is you needs one person to place a brick you can actually go to this website and see how this robot works robot works it's uh, you know we'll, the references will be there in the supplementary material but how do you think a robot like this can impact construction what it does is it places the the blocks or worker just has to load the block onto it Base, it will pick it up, place it at the right position with total accuracy, and do the mortar layer in. Okay, so one, no need for scaffolding, no need for so much of temporary works which are taken out. Is, is construction of temporary work value adding or non value adding but necessary? Non value adding but necessary. Okay, so all that is eliminated now. And the, the from a worker's point of view, even if I use a larger block, the robot can lift it. So strain on my body all of that is reduced and if it can perform it with the same skill as a good mason then it's something that's productivity is there the robot keeps track of how many bricks did i lay per shift what it is and if you have multiple robots like this across a site it becomes distributed kind of a team that is doing brick laying across okay so a lot of things to discuss there here is another technology which is kind of in a stage where you know it's just taking off 3d printing and if you 3d print with concrete for example so here is a 3d printer uh, developed uh, you know with iit madras and the first structure which we built how does 3d printing affect lean what happens more quality less variability M more quality less variability flow so okay so we are we are looking at your your hold for your your building information model based design is translated into a Machine. into a product okay there's no manual intervention okay so it's like what they say computer integrated manufacturing where you you make a model of something and your cnc machine actually produces it here you make a bim model of something and your 3d printer actually builds it okay that's where we would like to head going into visualization simulation gaming again a big area so you can see it again uh, you know whether you're using hololens or you're using any other technology the visualization you can you can be immersed in a construction site or immersed in a building okay before you actually even uh, build it okay the whole virtual prototyping uh, part of it or you can have augmented reality where you are you can see the person is holding up a tablet and visualizing what is going to be there you know on site 
So virtual reality, I'm immersed in something and it's all virtual. Augmented reality, I'm augmenting what is there with, uh, with this thing or going into mixed reality, which is both. <clears throat> okay, so again, you know, you have can, uh, you can uh, visualize and visualization brings in a lot of, what do you say, awareness of what I'm actually going to get. If as a client, I visualize uh, the building that the architect or the uh, developer is building for me, only when I am able to visualize and be immersed in it, I can make certain decisions and understand what is there and give feedback. When I see it on a drawing, I would say okay, but when it is actually built, I change my mind. Okay? <clears throat> and this is not only for the client, but also for the construction crew. They have found that a crew which you know goes on to a daily huddle and then kind of not based on drawings but based on an immersive en en environment plans the work is much more productive than if I just go without that kind of a of the, so the technology supports this. Okay, so so when you look at assessment of value alternative, this is from the client's perspective. Even from the contracting, from the uh, uh, the craftsman's perspective, because they might find a better way to construct. Constructability will improve. Constructability will be improved. Exactly. Okay, so a lot of lot of uh, benefits of just plain visualization, whether it's virtual, augmented, is you know in the next level, and taking it to higher levels. Now here are uh, some examples. So this was some of the visualization and augmented reality uh, kind of applications we developed, and this was a gaming application for construction safety, where if the person did something wrong, so you here you can see uh, the 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 worker who was gaming in our system did something wrong and the scaffold collapsed. Okay, or you walk a site and you don't walk on the path, something happens to you. So you can have gaming based training for using such platforms. Okay, now we come into AI and analytics. Again, big area, lots of discussion going on. As we go into these areas, I am kind of saying several impacts. And I put these question marks, some of these impacts we are not even, we do not even know yet. Okay, this is such an evolving area. There is so much that is going on in this, you know, whether it is uh, all of these learning technologies or what are the analytics that is required. But one thing is for sure, when we all of these technologies we discussed so far, the AI brain is required to process the data, to be able to bring out the decisions, to be able to bring out appropriate decision support for the project management. I can get a lot of sensing data from these kind of sensors, I can get my robot to do things, I can get my, uh, you know, my GIS platform to do what is required, but ultimately the processing and the analytics are required. Okay, so this is where the AI and uh, associated technologies play a big role. <clears throat> BIM is an area which many people are familiar with and I, like I said, I think uh, I, I know my colleague Ashwin Mahalingam has covered uh, aspects of this, but again this is a integration of several automation elements. Okay, so we look at, uh, we look at uh, the benefits of all of these, whether it is programming, computation, uh, you know, do data, documentation will be, will be felt by the, uh, by the organization that is implementing this. Just a couple of uh, points to make on BIM. So when we look at BIM, this is a very standard graph. I just wanted to emphasize it. When we look at the traditional effort, traditional uh, uh, method of construct of doing a project, you can see that, that this is effort. This is time. A lot of the effort is during the documentation and the construction phase. Whereas when we use a virtual model of BIM, a lot of the effort goes in the design and development phase. What does that mean? Actually, we are reducing the time for. We are reducing the time, and any errors we are correcting, we are correcting it in the virtual model and not in the Excellent built model. model. So the 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 costs also reduce, and the, when you have to do a correction in the virtual model, it's much easier than in the I mean than the real model. Similarly, here is another uh, graphic which is very relevant to this. What this shows is the information, and when we use traditional approaches in conventional workflows, you'll find that between each phase there is an information loss. This could be a requirement for a printed document. 
But when you do a digital digital workflow, the information Continuous. continuously improves. That's the ideal phase, okay? Where there is no drop in information. As information gets added, it keeps continuing to grow. Okay, so this kind of summarizes where uh, BIM has an impact. Now, when you go into cyber physical systems or industry 4.0, again, it is a portfolio of several technologies. A lot of these technologies have been uh, shown here and many of these technologies we have discussed. Okay, And uh, again, there is an integrated impact. I am not getting into details. It is as an exercise, you can look at these technologies and say if we actually start integrating these together, what is going to be the impact on construction. Now, we come finally to digital twin, which is an emerging technology. So, here I have kind of saying that the digital twin is a BIM plus an IOT plus robotics. All what we have talked about so far integrating everything because that is the twin. And if we look at from a digital twin perspective, you, you know we always wonder what is a digital twin? How is it different from say a BIM model? Okay, so this is a, a definition that is uh, kind of used. A digital twin, you have the physical object in the digital model and all the data flow is manual between the physical and the digital. Now, when you have a digital shadow, you have some amount of automatic da data flow okay, through sensing. When you have a digital twin, you have a full, all the data flow is digital okay, through, through sensing. And I would like to say also the reverse. If the digital twin finds that, you know, makes a forecast and finds that some information needs to be changed or some action needs to be taken, it should be able to communicate back to the uh, robots on the physical object to be able to change something. Okay, so when you look at digital twin today, it's a lot of it is used for building operation and maintenance. We talk about structural health monitoring, we talk about many aspects of digital twin from a building operation and maintenance point of view. But we should also look at digital twin from construction because in construction what is happening is the geometry of the structure is changing, it's evolving. So, Many groups are now starting to look at digital twin from a construction perspective, which is not as simple as it is when we look at it from a finished building. Okay, so this is an open area. I think there's a lot, and obviously, as it's an integration of all of these technologies, all the benefits potentially are there to gain when we look at it from a digital twin. <coughs> okay, just to summarize, okay, we looked at a lot of how automation can enhance lean practices okay but does lean enhance automation is there a reverse loop yes sir in what context is there a reverse loop okay any any discussion on this it's a lean practices it also reduces the reworks lean reduces rework reduces, yes it reduces the variability so whenever we have to give some input to the automation Right. So that part will be very simple or auto, automated from the right. lean perspective. Right. So that is one way to look at it. The other way is lean is still, yeah, go ahead. Yes, the other part is that it will dictate where we are supposed to move forward into right. making the automation or different technologies or tools. It, that's also a relevant point. I am also adding one point where lean, we remember, is also about people and processes. Yes. So if lean addresses the people side, appropriately and the pro general process the automation is I can automate the process I have but if my process is bad I'm automating a bad process, bad process. so if lean has made my pro re-engineered my process to be appropriate and then I automate that then it facilitates I've used this as an example okay what you see we discussed this so if you try to implement this on a small project what people have found is a contracting strategies on projects like this and this are that the culverts are contracted to a different agency, the rail is a different agency. So a lot of times when the rail is being laid, it comes to a culvert and it stops. Okay? The planning, the, the culvert is not. So if I am relying on technologies like this, I can afford to have this equipment idle or I have to go past that culvert and then lay the remaining part. Whereas a technology like this, I need continuous work phase of kilometers a day to be able for this to be effective. Mm -hmm. Now, 
where do I have to change the process to make sure that my culverts are constructed when the rail is before the rail is being laid. So you integrate collaboration is correct. So that is not necessarily and it, that is not necessarily and something that can be automated. And you have to go back to your process. You have to go back to the macro level yes. policies and be able to change that. Look at the people side of it. Change it and then your automation might work. Okay. So while we have discussed this. There is also a very strong link from how lean practices also enable automation and the cycle is required for the overall efficiency of the, the project as well as industry to improve. Okay, so again uh, let me refer you to the supplementary module where you will find a lot more information on some of the cases we developed and each of these uh, topics which we had covered. Thank you.